All right, I'm going to go ahead and talk about, I have a sample student rifle here that a student is working on for the Super Soaker project, and let's take a look at it, and I'll show you my critique for it. Uh, one of my concerns when I saw this rifle um, was that the first thing I noticed were the jagged edges and the use of this base poly right here. And even if you smoothed it, there's still some deformation happening here in the shape, so the smooth wouldn't really be an option for it. The best option for that would be to just replace it and model it with another um, edge shape and that student made that shape by using a, a torus okay and by doing a bullion on a torus and creating a nice smooth edge piece and then I even made the same comment about here we have a hose that's moving over here and that hose is still see the jagged edges on there um, they, so the student had started to add a little bit of a side detail piece here that was going to go on the side but one of my concerns was that if you look at it, you can see that black deformation in there. There's something happening to the geometry. And if you look through it, you can see there's some, there's like a dedicated line going across. And then something else has been accidentally moved into it. And that's why you're getting that black line in there. So um, without a doubt, if that was to go on for a finished presentation, it would definitely need to be worked on a little bit more. And there's also just some really simple base. I mean, look at that. That's just a circle that's squashed, you know. That's a, you know, that's a cylinder. So, I mean, there's some real basic shapes in there that we really need to go in there and figure out how we can modify that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause for just a second. I'm going to model a couple of these extra pieces. I'm going to slide them in there, and we'll take a look at a before and after version of this gun to see how we can enhance it. Okay, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, so um, I wanted to follow back up on the, the rifle difference here. So let's display, let's show all. And um, so right here, let's hide. that's the rifle that we started with, okay? And so there are some jagged edges on there that I didn't like. I didn't like the position of the trigger. It, did, it needs some more detail. This flap had an issue with it. Also, when I looked under from a middle standpoint, things were lining up. You can see a center line coming down there. That center line is off. Um, if you're looking at the top here, you might notice that a little bit here. Not necessarily, that's a teeny bit off there, but this is a little off off of there. So there are some problems with that, and I just felt like it was sort of a base rifle element. Another part that was wrong with it is, see this round part right here? It was supposed to encompass all of the barrels, and see how it's not hitting the other barrel design there? So you know, you have this, this base cylinder shape that's sticking out. So there's just some real little fixes. So um, what I did is I came back in and I, I took the same gun. Okay, let me go ahead and group this. And um, I'll move it off to the side here. We'll take a look at it in just a second. Okay. <laughs> and I took the same gun and I, I duplicated basically the water tanks to make it look a little beefier. Okay, but it still can fit with somebody's arm in here holding it. And it could be resized, but for right now, just for initial presentation, I think that adds a lot more to the gun. What I also did is I came in here, I centered that piece right there to get it to fit around all of the barrels. Okay, and um, I fixed that. I centered up all the pieces in here. I came in, I replaced the hoses. You can see they're nice and round and smooth. They don't have that jagged edge to them. Okay. Uh, I also replaced these canister tanks right here because when you look up close on these, they're getting a jag they're starting to get a jagged edge to it that might show up in the rendering. Even this here technically could be replaced as well, but I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Um, and what I did is I came in and I fixed these these bar sections that the student had inside. See, they're really jagged right there. I went in and I adjusted those, and then I created a, a base little handle here, and I took the handle and I duplicated I actually placed it up here first and after I made it fit I put a bend on it okay how I made that shape is I just started with a really base um, polygon cylinder I came in and I added a series of subdivisions oops I added uh, subdivisions in height there like so I came in and I grabbed some of the finger marks and what I did is I made sure I only grabbed about half of them let me back up there real quick. Uh, that's a little bit too many marks. So let me come in here and uh, let me adjust that. I didn't mean to jump so fast. I had 13 there. I think I had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8, maybe 10. 
So what I did is I grabbed not all the vertices, but half of the vertices. So I basically took this half right here and I stretched them back. So that way I wouldn't affect anything. I took these vertices here, these right here, and these in here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Oh, I missed a section. That's my bad. That section. There we go. Grab that section and that section there. Okay? And what I did is I basically dropped them back like this. Okay? And I created that shape. And then I came back and I moved this back into place. And I could always use my scale button. I could adjust a little bit and put sort of a hard edge on there if I want or I can round it or whatnot. But that's basically what I did to make that shape. Okay? And you can see it's still a little jagged, so after I made it, if I hit 3 and I smooth it out, I can see what it's going to look like. So then I came back into my shape right here, okay? And uh, um, what I did is I put, I went and I smoothed it off, okay? So that's what it looks like. I went over here, and I had to mess with smooth for a little bit because under the option box, I had it set on crease all, and it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. It was making it extremely heavy. So when I hit apply to this, it bumps up my poly count. I get a pretty decent smooth finish, and I'm only at about 900 vertices, which really isn't that much. It's almost like a, a large sphere. And if I put it, oh, that's a lot. That's 14,000. I didn't mean to go that high there. I meant to go back one step, and if I come back again, and if I go to smooth, okay, where was it here? Bring up the option box and hit apply. Um, I'm still at about 3,000, and that's really smooth. I don't need to go that far, but I found a happy middle in between, and I sort of ended up with this piece right here for a handle. Okay, took a little bit of trial and error, and that's why I paused to continue modeling. In, um, and then what I did is after I, I had that shape developed, let me go back. So imagine if that was smooth here. I'll go in and let me smooth that again, and then I'll show you how I bent it, right? So if I come down in here, let's go to smooth again. Let me have that division. Let's hit apply. Okay. So how did I bend it? Um, I got the that. Let me hide this one here. Okay. I got this. I moved it into position to about where I wanted it. Now on a normal model, that's way too green for me. Um, there's a lot of subdivisions in there, but since this is a little bit different of a piece, um, that's okay. I don't mind it being really heavy right now. Okay. And and actually, if I went in and I adjusted it more, it doesn't have to be that heavy. That's really heavy there. So I positioned it in place to where that round curve would be. And then I went in, and remember I showed you guys the other week the nonlinear deformers? Mm -hmm. So I came over here to animation, and I went to create deformers, and went down to nonlinear, and I put a bend on it. And there's the bend. And so I just came down here, and I started to adjust some of the bend like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then I got it to curve. And then I got it into place the way that I wanted to. I select the object. Remember from that lecture, delete by type history, okay? And then I have a handle that fits, okay? So that's how I created the handle. That one's really heavy, though. Again, I have my poly count open right now. How do you get your poly count up so you can see when objects are heavy? Obviously, if they're super green, as uh, John experienced in the first class, right? Um, but to get that up, if I go down to UI elements, I'm sorry, heads up display, here I have a poly count option. And I really like that because it really tells me, I just turned it off, so if I go to display, heads up display, and come down here, and if I go to poly count right there and I click that on, anytime I touch, a, it's telling me how many vertices are in that object and how many are in the set. So that's a lot compared to, you know, I'm doing this real fast because I'm not trying to have a really long lecture here, but the other one that I had, display show all, worked well enough for me right there. And that's only 920 vertices versus 3,000. So there's a way to find a happy middle in there sometimes between the both of them. Okay? There we go. So, so far what I did to the rifles, I straightened everything out. Okay? I added the handles. Just even adding the handles, I feel like added a lot of detail to the gun itself. Okay? Um, the next thing I did is I came up here and I put this center rail in here. So it looks like it, this is some type of a maybe a pull mechanism, okay? Um, and then the next thing I did is I put a Picatinny rail up here so I could add a scope on, and we've already seen the lecture on the scope, so imagine if I, I would have imported that, but unfortunately Phil did not save his file, and so I lost the scope lecture, but I have the recorded, I lost the Maya file. But imagine if I had a cool scope up there. I have these double water tanks in the back. I've added a lot of detail on there 
it really starts to make the rifle pretty interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to come in and see if I can place a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select the old version of the rifle here, and um, I'm going to hide it real quick. I'm going to add a couple more things for you guys while you're watching. Okay, so what's more detail that I can add up in there? You know, there's always tons of detail. I can come in here and I can select multiple faces on one side. So I can do that. Also, remember how I, um, if I come in here and I select faces and say one, two, three, four, five, right in there, I could come over to this side and make sure I match that up. I could put my selection to select the negative of both sides, but I'm measuring off of this corner right here and it hits there at the same place. So I have, I just selected five edges there. Let's say, what if I come down here in the middle and go one, two, three, four, we'll do six on this one. Okay? And then what I can do is I can go to extrude and I can extrude these in. Okay? And I can extrude them in a little bit like this. I can extrude them again. Okay? And I can create this sort of plastic edge detail that that's I might see with a oops with a piece of plastic okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click off of that and look at it see I put a nice little detail piece on there now just by doing that really simple okay another way I like to create detail is by um, I had this piece right here that holds the handle I'm just gonna take this piece right here real quickly I'm gonna duplicate it now I'm just gonna scale it oops I'm gonna scale it this way and then make it a little bit larger and I'm just gonna make a little end piece of detail right here see that just that little end piece adds a lot to my overall design. It's just what I call edge detail. See, it just adds a little edge there and it makes it visually interesting. Okay. I also had this piece here that I had made. Okay. And what it basically was was on the original model there was a polyplane. So I went in here and I made the same polyplane, but this time I made it so it doesn't have any any mesh overlapping each other, creating any problems or issues. And then I, what I did is I beveled the edge first. It's just a real simple poly cube. After I got the beveled round edge on there, I came and I created an elliptical. I took a cylinder shape, I squashed it, and I placed it in here and I did a bullion. And I created that, that, that detail. And what's nice about having this is now I can come in here and I can put it on part of my rifle and see if I can get this to fit. And as I put it over there, I'm also going to duplicate it and see if I can't blend it in here to the front of my rifle. Okay, it acts as a, it's a nice little side plastic decoration. And if you look around um, at a lot of the reference that we have, you'll notice that Nerf does this quite often. And not just Nerf, I mean a lot of designers do where they add a really cool element that, that might just be a little piece of plastic sticking on the outside to a gun. Okay, um, and here it's a little large. And I, I like that little piece of detail, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can adjust this and just make it a little bit smaller. And um, I like to play with the scale tool sometimes to see if I come up with another version of it. You know, um, like I could take that and I could set that down about here. And I could see if I could get that to line up about here. And it starts to hit a little bit of that sphere right there. But um, what if I adjust that sphere to just a teeny bit like that. Oops. If I come back over and I get that little piece of detail just to sort of fit in there like that. See? Give me a cool little element. So um, I, I haven't made any, I would make maybe little mounting brackets for that or a little uh, cylinder. It was, might be real tiny just to look in there to see what it, you know. Just curious. What happens if I, if I take those and I flip them the other way? So I'm just going to take my scale tool now this I'm going to sort of scale them back like this, scale them up a little here, and I actually might like that design a little bit better if I just sort of get that up there like that. Okay, all right. So now I look at it and it feels, I, it feels a lot heavier, a lot more. Uh, the the weapon itself, uh, I should say the toy, not the weapon. It's not a weapon. It's a toy. It's a super soaker rifle. It feels a little bit more beefier. It has more to it. It has more little edges of detail. Okay, so there's still a couple little ways. Um, one thing I thought about doing is making a little tripod. And I thought if I came up here, I can make a little tripod leg that might mount on the front. It could be an optional part of the toy. And so what I'm going to do to, to make that really quickly is I'm basically 
I took a really simple square shape here. It's just a square poly cube. I took another square poly cube and I added a couple subdivisions. I grabbed one of those and I pinched them off right there. Okay. Um, and actually, let me adjust that. I was going to do this. I was going to bring this in like this. And actually, maybe I'll leave that. I'm going to scale them down a little bit like so. Grab this one here. Bring this down. So I don't have such a cube shape. I have something that's a little bit different. And I might, I'm going to go ahead and scale that back out just a teeny bit more. About something like that, okay? Let me select both of them here. Again, right now it's a little too wide. Um, there we go. Select these here. I'm going to scale them down a little bit. You know what? Let me back up here. I want to do something. I made an adjustment here. And uh, I want to see if I can, there we go go back to the beginning here. So I just command Z that real quick. This is what I wanted to do is I wanted to scale it down like this real quick. Okay. Uh, now that I have that scaled down, um, now I'll do that adjustment where I came in here and I scaled those vertices down. Drop it in a little bit like that. Just creates a little bit of detail, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bevel the edges and I'm going to go ahead and take this piece and I'm going to put it up there on this front and make it look like it's some type of attachable tripod. Okay. So that's a nice little detail feature that could add a little bit to the design. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select my edge, and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to select um, this this piece first. Okay, let's go to edge. I'm just going to select them all. I don't need to bevel the interior edges right here, right? Only the exterior edges that really show up. So I'm going to deselect these here, deselect that. There we go. Get that guy down there, look through it, make sure I have them all. Uh, get that edge back. There we go. So I have all the edges that I want. Okay. So again, I'm going to come back up here and go to my polygon submenu. I'm going to go over to mesh and uh, edit mesh. Actually, let's go down here to bevel. I'm going to hit the option box, and I have three segments set. I'm going to apply it at two. That's really a lot. It really changed that. So I'm going to bring this back down to about 0.7. Hit apply. That's sort of what I wanted, and then I'm going to come in here. And this is basically to me just like a little rubber cap, you know, that sits on the outside here. So again, I'm going to go to edge. So I'm going to select all the edges here and apply. That's a little too much. I have to adjust this because it's a different size object. Cool. That's basically about what I wanted. Okay. So I'm now going to come in and I'm going to take this little piece. I'm going to group it together. I'm just going to bring it over here. And um, now it's not long enough right now to be a tripod, so I might need to increase a little bit of its size, about like so, and um, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit. And I was going to sort of stick it in there somehow and make a little mounting bracket for it. But then I realized if this were to be a tripod and this were to go down, this is not at an angled edge right here. It's at an angle, which doesn't quite feel like. So all right, so I'm just going to Command Z a couple steps back and go back to when I smooth that shape there, right? So I'm going to wait to smooth it now because of that. I'm going to go ahead and take this shape here. I'm going to group it. I'm going to move it back over, okay? I'm going to get this to fit in. I'm going to go ahead. Now, here's something I haven't shown you guys yet. If I want to rotate this, I want to move the, the arrows up here. The arrows are called the pivot point. The way I can do that is I hit Insert. I hit Insert on my keyboard. And I grab these and I raise these up to about right here. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to have a problem because you don't have an insert key. So I believe on the Mac, it's the home button there. So now I can stretch that out a little bit like so. Okay. And um, you know what? I want to make those vertices a little bit wider up there. Let's go back. Let me select the vertices real quick. I'm just going to stretch them out a teeny bit more, a little bit like that. Okay. That's cool. And now that I have that, Imagine here's a way I can test it that if I had a ground plane right here and if my rifle is sitting on that ground plane, I can bring this up. See, now I have a good idea of how I need to bring that up right there. I can bring it up and I can bring it over like so. Okay. So I can check it so that makes sense and it creates sort of a nice geometric shape. I can come back, I can delete this, just use that as reference. Now I can come in here. Uh, that end is dropping out there a little bit, right? So what I might do just for fun is just extrude that and bring it down a teeny bit like so. So 
it looks like a little piece of rubber. I'm going to go to edge. I'm going to select all the edges. Um, I don't need to bevel this interior edge here. You know what, though? I want to. Let's do this. Let's scale these in a little bit like so. And then I'm going to scale these out a little bit. So they look a little bit more like a chunk of rubber. Uh oh, I missed a section there. There we go. There. That's cool. Let's go to edge. Select all the edges. Right. Let's go to mesh. Let's go down to bevel here. Let's open it up. Hit apply. Let's go a little bit wider than that. A little bit more. There you go. Okay. So now I have this little tripod piece. Part of me wants to beef it up a little bit. So, you know what, just to cheat here, what I'm going to do is um, save myself some time. I'm just going to take this piece here. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to flip it over like this. And I'm going to um, flip it back and stick it up in here as a little piece. Now, um, I, I have this, I want to reset the pivot point. There's a way I can do that. To reset a pivot point, if you've moved a piece and you want to modify it, you come back under Edit. I'm sorry, it's under Modify, Freeze Transformations, and it, there it goes. It resets my pivot point for me. Okay. What it did is it reset it there, but it's not resetting it to... So what I have to do, if I go to my Move Tool and put my Move Tool on... Double-click your Move Tool and go to Object. Okay. And now I click it. There. It should, you know what, it's not, that's the weirdest thing. Why is it not going back there? Anyway, um, let's try that again. Whirl. Let's double click the scale tool. Maybe it's an option that I, hold on a sec, guys. There it goes. So if I go to, there, that's what I wanted. I just had to go into the, Selection. I went to the Move tool. I meant to go to the Scale tool, and I just told it to go to World Setting. There. So now I can take this piece here, and um, I wanted to scale it like that. Okay. I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to rotate it a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and put it up here and have it sticking out. So you know, if I'm in a, in a particular hurry, I could have just made that out of a simple poly piece real quick, but I just went ahead and I did it like this. You know, when I moved it, I made a mistake. I accidentally rotated. Uh, one of the edges here, so I'm just going to get those back there. So I should only have one degree of rotation on there. there I'm going to get it into place so it looks like a cool little piece. And um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. The way I'm going to adjust it is I'm not going to scale because if I scale and shrink, it changes the bevel on the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the vertices. I'm going to grab those vertices individually and slide those over like so. Okay? Cool. So now I have a little mount piece where it looks like feels a little bit more realistic in there. Okay, I'm also going to duplicate this. So here's some little details I could do that are really quick and easy for me. I can take a piece like this, I can scale it down like so, and then I'm just going to grab the vertices on the edge right here. Uh oh, I accidentally grabbed the other ones there, and I'm going to grab these vertices right here. Okay, I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to scale them down like this. See that? And just having a nice little angle like there can add a lot to a nice design. Okay? It's nothing major, it's something simple. I'm going to duplicate this piece here. Shrink it down. Look at that. Fit it right in the middle like that. Scale it out a little bit. See, it just feels like a nice little bolt design that could be on the front there. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to group this little leg here that I have. Okay, now it's really small. It needs to come out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to grab the vertices here. And uh, actually, why don't we just do this? Why don't we group it? Here we go. Let's group it together. Center the pivot. Vertices. I'm going to grab these vertices. Okay, let's try to grab all the vertices here one more time. There we go. Come on, Maya. There we go. That's why. Select the whole piece. Let's go to vertices selection. Select them all. There we go. Down and over a little bit about right there okay so now i have a cool little mount on there and when i'm done to get the other side i'm just gonna center the pivot i'm going to duplicate it 
bring it over. I'm going to go to my scale option, flip it to the other, and come over in my box where it tells me, and for some reason it's not telling me the scale transfer. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is reset the, the, uh, the transformation right now. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is come up here under Modify, Freeze Transformation, and I'm just going to rotate this thing. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get it to fit right in there just like the other one does. Okay, there. Now I have a cool little tripod. So if I wanted to keep going into this, you know, um, the last thing I would do for detail is I'd add some screws, maybe on a couple pieces of the rifle, just to make it look like it's been put together. Uh, it's really easy to make some screws. This is how you do it. Okay. Um, now, I'm on interactive creation, so when I create any type of spherical shape, it just appears in the middle of uh, wherever I drag my mouse, right? If I want to get something that's lined up completely, I can come back under create here and under polygon primitives, I take off interactive creation. And if I take that off right now, the benefit of doing that for me will be this. As see, it drops it in the middle of the grid. Now if I create two items, they're exactly lined up and centered. See that? So this way I can use this shape to bully on. And now I can make a little screw to sit into part of the gun. So I, that's important for me to turn those off and on real quick. And then I also made a cube right here. Okay, so with those three shapes, now I'm going to make a, a screw. Then I can duplicate it and I can go along parts of the rifle and bully on little holes and put a little screw in and I can add lots of detail. So this is how I do that. First, let's, um, I can cut off, I want to cut off the rest of the shape that I'm not going to need. So I could bully on it, or I could just come in here real quick. I'm just going to drag in faces. I'm going to select uh, this, this, this segment that I don't want right here. I don't need any of that. And then come back here, go to edge. I'm going to select that edge right there. I'm going to come back down under mesh here. Is it mesh or edit mesh? Edit, that's mesh there. Fill hole. So now the hole's filled right. Then I'm going to come over. And I've noticed there's two types of screws. There's what we call a Phillips screw that has a cross segment in it and there's also an allen wrench screw. I'm just going to go ahead, I've noticed though on some different designs they have allen wrench screws so if I wanted to make an allen wrench screw this is what I could do. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this but I'm going to take the original one here that has the subdivisions. Why? Because the duplicate doesn't have any subdivisions. I'm going to take the one that's right here Okay, and if I, hold on a minute, what happened to my shape there? Okay, and if I come down here to make it look like an Allen wrench, I just reduce the subdivisions down, and I can go to like five or six, like that. Okay, that's at seven. I think I think it's an Allen wrench is like six, like so. Yep, like that. So then it's already centered. I could just put that down in there. I can go ahead, and I can get that centered like so, so it looks like it was put together with an Allen wrench. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do both versions for you real quick. Okay. So I have this here, I'm going to duplicate that, I'm going to rotate it, oops, hold shift, and then rotate, go down to 90 degrees here, right, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to combine those, right, mesh, combine, touch the shape I want, let's drop it down a little bit more, shape that's going to affect it, and let's go to mesh boolean difference, it's not good. Let's try that again, guys, one more time. Let's hopefully it won't do that on this one here. Or else I have to start all over again. Yay, it didn't do it there. Okay, so now I have a little screw detail. I think here I didn't like the fact that I combined it. So I'm going to uncombine it real quick, separate. I'm going to do one at a time. This one, and hopefully this will work, right? The mesh, fully on difference. There, so I have a little slit there, and then I'm going to do it again. So what happened there is that that's my screw head there. Okay, It didn't like the fact that I had those two polys and I combined them crossing each other. So I have little bits of detail there. So I, I like this one for right now, so I'm going to go ahead and select these two. I'm going to grab this one, bring it up here a little bit, like this, and I'm going to group them, center my pivot, and I'm going to go ahead and just, just to save it, I duplicate it. I'm going to bring this over 
and just turn it 90 degrees here. Bless you. Get that 90 degrees. I'm going to come along on a couple parts on my rifle and see where I could I can make a little screw hole and make it look like there's a screw there. So let's start right here. Now it's a little bit harder whenever you have any type of a round surface. You have to really get in there. It's a little large right now, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down about so. Whenever I have a rounding surface, I need to get it to become sort of parallel to the surface plane, right? So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that so I have I can mess with this one here. All right. So to get it to be there we go. I need it to be about right there, right? Okay. And let's go back to my move tool. I want to go back to object so the arrows line up with it. There. So now I can get it to position where I want it. What I can do is I can sink that in just a little bit like so. Okay. Touch the object. And um, you know, I just want to move that over so it's a little bit more in the middle there. Okay. So watch. Let's do this. I'm going to duplicate that. Move it over a little bit like so. And then I'm going to round that off to the design that's taking place. It's about there. And I shift D it again. This time I'm going to completely turn it back a little bit more. I'm just going to put three right there for right now, right? Sink that in about the same way. Okay. And what I'm going to do is ungroup these real quick. Okay. Edit and ungroup. Edit and group. Come here, edit and group. Okay. Oh, didn't do it that time. Ungroup. There we go. Okay. And let's try that one more time. <coughs> Edit. Ungroup. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to take the shape here. I'm going to touch it and do a bullion. And you know what? I don't know if it wants to. Oh, that's why. I had it grouped together. I and yes, I understand that. Maya got mad at me there. Let's hopefully see if this will do this. It did it. Okay. And then what I can do is I can take my screw and I can just sort of set it right inside there. You see that? Then it makes for a nice little bit of detail. On, oops. Let me close that down. Now I have to be careful on any any time you have a rounding surface like that. See, it's it's actually creating some deformation right in there. You see that with the edges, the geometry. So if I render that real quick, you're going to see see how it shows up there. So. That, that was probably the bad example for me to show. I probably wouldn't do that there. I'd find another way to add detail there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just delete my screws right now. Um, oops. And um, if you had a straight edge part, what I would do is I'd look for a part of the rifle that might have more of a straight edge or part of the barrel or something. So fortunately on here, there's not too many straight edges. There are some curves, but I could still come over and I could get this screw to fit into some cool areas, you know. Um, let's let's put one up here. Let's get this in position here. And again, that's really large. I'm going to go ahead and scale that down quite a bit, right? <coughs> and let's do this. We're going to get one right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in about right there. Right. In position there. And I'm going to duplicate one to use over here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that one. Put it down a little. Take both, select them, duplicate those, and slide those over here to the other side. Okay? And I'm going to touch all of these, go back under Edit Ungroup. Edit here, let's ungroup them all. Okay, they're ungrouped now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and touch the object here. Mesh Boolean Difference. Okay? And Mesh Boolean Difference. Oops mesh and bullion. That's why you guys got to get your hotkeys going. You know, I noticed something. There's a little bit more space here than there was on this side. So I'm going to fix that real quick. And this is how I'm going to fix it. These are going to be moved over to match. I want it to be accurate. So that that's about the same distance as what's over here. I can compare them. Sort of eyeball it, move it over a teeny bit more. That's pretty good. And so that tells me that these little details here are out of whack.
So I'm going to go ahead and slide these over a teeny bit like that. Okay. There. Now let's finish this off. Okay. And let's do the same thing here. Okay. Now I'm just that simple. I'm just going to grab the screws, right? If I can get them. I'm telling you, I, I, maybe it's my mouse setting. No, it's just not my uh, does, you know, I mean, well, it could be default mouse settings, though, if you have to go through and adjust the mouse setting. It's just so sensitive whenever I touch something in my... But see, now I added those little I, screw I, holes there. Based on the <coughs> menu, like the push no. Uh, no. It's just something else. I don't know what it is yet. So now I could come over and I could do that same thing. I could apply those little, that little screw hole. I could put one on the side right here. You know, I might, if I had more angular pieces on my gun here, I'd probably come in and put more. But even if I just look at it now, I'm going to hide that. Okay. I have a lot more detail on my super soaker here. Okay, I got little buttons, gadgets, little protective thing here. If I had a cool scope, I got a little tripod, I got little grips on it. Okay, that's really moving my design along quite further. Okay, and that's exactly what I want. Now, I didn't design this, another student designed this, so... I do, you know, I, you're taking a little bit of a risk when you look at some of the current designs of the current rifles. This has a little bit of futuristic blend into it with a little bit of sort of 50s steampunk with a little bit of old school design. So it has numerous elements in there. Um, I, I think it would have been easier if the student would have chosen some more geometric shapes to include in there because when I look at some of the design reference, those are the design sensibilities that I'm I'm receiving, you know, from Nerf designers that are working at Hasbro. Um, lots of geometric shapes in here, and I have lots of organic shapes. So from one standpoint, maybe that's good to have all those organic shapes, right? But real quick before we finish this up, let's just what are some other areas of detail I could add? Well, here's one question: If I was an executive, right, where are you going to put the water? I might have a little cap back here, <laughs> so I can make a little cap. Um, when I make the cap, your hands are going to be wet, right? So when I go to open the cap, it's going to slide. So I might have little, you know, little edges. And it's so easy to make something like that. It's literally, watch, guys. Um, <coughs> I think I, I showed you guys on the scope demo. Remember when I made the little knobs? But here, let me, I'll do it again here. Let me go under create. I need to take on, turn on interactive creation really quick here. Uh, polygon, come on. There we go. Stay there. Interactive creation. There we go. So here, here, if I were to make a cap, this is how easy it is. I'm going to take one poly shape here. I'm going to zoom into it really quick. I'm going to scale it down. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to pretend this is my cap shape right here. Um, I'm going to go in here and add a couple subdivisions real fast. Okay, actually, I can't add that. Why? Because that's the core piece that has. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that, leave that one down there, grab the original one here, enlarge this one. And now I can add some subdivisions to it. So I'm just going to put like, oops, didn't like that either. Or I could just delete it and start over real quick, right? Something happened there that wasn't good. There. So I have my shape here, right? And um, duplicate that, put the other one there. I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to put a subdivision in there. Um, let's do two just in case. So what I'm going to do is grab these right here. See, I'm going to put those down about there. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to um, scale this down a little bit. Bring them down about there. Just put a little edge. And then I'm going to scale this edge down like that. So I get basically like a little, might be a little twist off. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my shape right here. Okay. And since this is a twist off cap, you know what? I want it a little bit broader, more like a twist off, like a, a bottle cap. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more like so, like about there, right? Now I'm just going to go in. I'm going to select the faces real quick. Let's see if I can do two in a space around the whole thing. One, two, one, two. Sometimes I like trying something just a little different to add something to it. And nope, I can't do that. So I'm just going to select all the faces. No big deal. Just me being picky. Under mesh, I'm going to say turn off, keep faces together, and hit extrude. And now, as I go to extrude these right here, 
they're going to come on in a little bit of an angle, but if I just adjust them slowly, like so, and pop them out a little bit, okay? All right, that's it. I click off of this right now, and there's my little water cap, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this, scale it down a little bit. You know what? I love detail, so I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that shape. I'm going to make it a little bit wider here, make it look like it's sort of a base fitting. They could fit into the gun. Okay. Go ahead and scale that up. About there. So I'm going to go ahead right now. I'm going to select this. Okay. Group. And I have that little piece. I'm going to come back here. Bring that to the back of the gun somewhere. So I need to decide what would be uh, a good place. I think a good place at be the fact that I've used numerous super soaker guns would be at a slight angle. So when they're holding the gun, it might be able to get be easier to get water filled inside there, right? And I want to get it centered to that center line right there, so I'm going to grab it and drag it over a little bit. So that's that center line that hits it right where I want it. I'm going to duplicate it, put one over here for the other side. Do the same thing. That's the center line right there. Get that about here. Center line, there it is. Okay, there. So now it looks much more realistic, right? I got a little bit of detail. It makes sense. I got little screw holes, little side plate. I got a cool little stand. I got little water holes there. It, it would make great for a front view. And I just noticed something. The student's a little off here. See that? These are not centered with what's there. Okay. So I need a little bit more work in there. I'd right, go back. That's what's really important about always checking your models, making sure things are centered and lined up. Okay. There are some things off kilt here. But right now, um, I, I would probably replace these shapes. But outside of that, um, I think it'd be good enough to start adding some materials to and do some renders of it. And, and I would try to pitch that and see if they had an interest in that type of design. You know, you never know. Design styles fluctuate. You can't do geometric shapes forever. Eventually, 50s will come back. And it's just like I noticed the other day, for the past year, I've been seeing students in tight jeans. It's like this latest thing going on. Everyone's wearing their jeans super tight. And the other, and today, I saw three or four students with bell bottoms on. I'm like, bell bottoms are coming back. But what do you know? 2012 going into 13. So changing styles. The same thing that happens with design. Something gets really hot. It's a cool design style. And then you see people go back and come back with another approach. Okay. So that wraps up sort of our modification. And again, let's take a look at, let me hide this. Actually, I just show all. Let's take a look at the previous gun. Show all. So that's where, we're, where we were at. Some geometry problems, not much detail, some jagged edges, not much information here. And then this is where we ended up at, okay? We did some extrusion, made a Picatinny rail. We finished this, added this little side detail up here. We made a front uh, um, tripod. We add, made a grip, we added in the grip. We replaced a couple items here. We put some screw holes. And just even these little details, see how nice that is? It really adds a lot to the gun, or to the super soaker. It's toy design, guys. Be good designers. Think about what you're doing. Okay? All right.